the ghost of lease purchase present. The old Norwegian grandfather clock that my folks had left me had chimed at the top of the hour. At the sound of the second chime, as I had been warned, a rather well-dressed woman's spirit appeared apparating through the bathroom down the hall. I pondered which portion of the toilet facility she had used for her entrance. I was pretty sure it wasn't the bathtub or the sink. Yuck. Wonder why she didn't dash to use the fireplace like Manny had. Before I could give it another thought, she spoke. Hurry, she ordered. The clock moves quickly and we have much to see. Hold on to the end of my scarf. We must be off. Mind if I just call you Mo, short for Maureen, I asked. Very tersely, she replied, that is not my designation. I am the least purchased ghost of the present. You ghosts sure do have a great sense of humor. Always the life of the party, aren't you? I laughed. Call me what you wish, but we must be traveling. With that, we were beamed, or whatever they call it, to my least purchased investing office in downtown Seattle. It was a very prestigious location that I had rented in better financial times. It consisted of three offices, a conference room, and a lobby. Oh, did I mention I was also behind on my lease payments here, and the landlord, landlord had given us notice to be out after the holidays. Heck, even the water company wouldn't replace the bottle, and the coffee vending people took, their, took back their espresso machine. I had two employees left, Bubba and Simone. They had been with me since the beginning and basically helped me with everything from secretarial duties, appointments, checking, competitive prices, marketing. You get the picture. They were great. They did everything without me micromanaging them. I did the deal and they took care of the details. We were a great team, or so I thought. Mo, the ghost, told me to pay attention and listen to Bubba and Simone's conversation. Bubba. So where is Ralph? I haven't seen him here in the last two weeks. We haven't done a deal in months. This business is falling apart. Simone, I know, I know. I could never get him on the phone. All I do is leave messages. I read the business mail the other day and the landlord is kicking us out after Christmas. We received an awful detainer action. Guess the idea of a bonus is out of the question, huh? Bubba, bonus, are you kidding? Ralph owes me two weeks back pay. I can't even afford to get gifts for the kids this year. Can you keep a secret, Simone? Simone, sure. Bubba, I am interviewing for another job. I can't go on like this. No communication, clients, or paycheck. Simone, I am doing the same thing, going on job interviews. Real shame, too. I've been with Ralph for over 10 years. I used to love working here. Bubba, almost nine years for me. Simone, what happened? He used to be such a go-getter. We always had a plethora of lease purchase sellers, investors, buyers. We did deals with all the local real estate agents, local investors, and mortgage lenders. We were the kings of the lease purchase in Washington. Ralph was so motivated, and he was a great salesman at one time. He was Mr. Lease Purchase. Bubba, guess Ralph just burned out or took too much for granted. We haven't created any notes in months and the phone never rings for consultations, only bill collectors. No sandwich deals, no wholesale arbitrage assignments, no retail deals, no hybrids, no nothing, nada. Simone, really a shame. He used to be someone I looked up to. He was one of the best lease purchase deal makers I ever saw. Ralph could do deals on vacation. Bubba, not anymore. He lost his mojo. I understand his family is really suffering too, and they might lose the house. Pretty scary situation, if you ask me. Simone, I wonder why Emily puts up with this. Bubba, hope springs eternal, I guess. Maybe she loves him too much to complain. Oh, well, none of my business. Simone, I remember a time when Ralph could just do deals whenever he wanted. He had the magic Midas touch. He could cold call anyone who had a house for sale or rent and closed them in one phone call. He had a list of buyers and investors. Remember the time he bet that loser investor, Hod Hedgeback, that he could pick up any three names out of the phone book and he would set up an appointment with one of them? Bubba, yep. He did the deal on the second phone call. Ralph was really something. Won that bet too. Hodge bet had to leave town. He was so embarrassed. Looks like the touch turned into poison. Everything he touches now turns to mirth. 
Simone, I didn't know you speak French. Bubba, I'm learning out of necessity. My next word is au revoir to Ralph and this fiasco of a company. This was horrible, Ralph said to himself. Oh, ghost of least purchase present. I watched and listened to people I had known for years say things they would never say to my face. These were people who respected me. The worst thing about it was that everything they said was true. I have lost my drive, my motivation, my skills. I have let my family down. And these folks who depended on me for their living, where did I go wrong? What happened to me? Mo, take me away from here. I've seen enough. Take me now. The ghost placed her shawl in my hand. We slowly dissipated into a cloud of electrons and arrived in my home. Until now, I really never thought of how my actions could affect others. My employees would suffer financially because of my failure. It was the one thing to disappoint myself, but the way my actions affected others was shocking. They would not have much of a holiday thanks to me. I was despondent. I needed a drink. Hey, Mo, I called out. Do they let you boogeyman or boogeywoman, in your case, have a brewski? Mo ignored me and my nervous levity and just hovered above the ground. I went to the fridge and grabbed a beer. I was so shaken that I grabbed one of Emily's pumpkin beers. Do people really drink this stuff, I mused? The ghost spoke. You have one more visitor at the top of the hour. The ghost of least purchase future. I leave from whence I came. Ralph with that, she went back into the bathroom and down the you-know-where. What a way to travel. I took another sip of the beer and decided that pumpkin beer wasn't so bad after all. The clock chimed three times, and all of a sudden my beer bottle began to vibrate. Oh my God, what's going on here? Smoke was rising from the bottle like a scene from Aladdin's magic lamp. I quickly placed it on the ground. Out of nowhere, two small beings with long green hoods that covered their faces and bodies appeared. Ralph, are you the ghosts of least purchase future? They both nodded their heads. These guys were really scary, I thought, that I shouldn't make a joke and bestow upon them the name Jack as I had planned. Words became began pouring out of my mouth. Of all the ethereal beings that I've had the misfortune of meeting on this dreadful night, you are the ones I have truly feared the most. I'm not ready to see the future. No man should know what befalls him. I will not go. You cannot make me. These were the last words I said as I was enshrouded in a dark, impenetrable cloud of dark ink by the cloak of these two beings. <laughs>